Created by Denny O'Neill and Larry Hama, Yuriko Oyama first appeared in 1983's Daredevil issue 197. It wouldn't be for another three years in Alpha Flight issue 33 when Yuriko would finally become Lady Deathstrike. Who is she? Let's talk about her. First, thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you do like the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I upload videos just like this every single week. Alright, let's jump into our story. And our story begins during the 1940s in the Pacific Theater of World War II, Japan. Kenji Oyama was a kamikaze pilot for the Japanese, part of their Divine Wind special attack units. On one mission, Kenji attacked an American ship and he dive-bombed the big ship, but the bombs on his plane did not explode when he crashed. Kenji survived the incident, but he became horribly scarred and disfigured. Afterwards, Kenji wrote a book about what happened and then became head of Oyama Heavy Industries after the war, making a ton of money in the process, enough to buy a private island and become a lord. Divine Wind became Lord Darkwind. So Lord Darkwind developed a method of bonding adamantium metal to human bone, and this would be an attempt to create super soldiers for Japan. During this time, Kenji married and had three children, two sons, and a daughter that they named Yuriko Oyama, who was born in 1964 in Osaka, Japan. The kids were tutored and mentored by a lady named Marcy Stryker, and Marcy happened to be the wife of U.S. Army Sergeant William Stryker. Kenji still carried with him grief and dishonor at the failure of his mission back in World War II, so he started to wear a cowl to cover his face to hide his shame. He also performed a ritual which disfigured his kids, Yuriko included. Kenji then started using his money and resources to attack industry and government, even sending his two boys out to kill the Japanese Prime Minister, an attack in which they both seemingly died. Meanwhile, on the island, Kenji was continuing to work on that procedure which would bond adamantium to the bone. And for one procedure, Kenji brought a villain named Bullseye to the island to undergo the procedure since Bullseye was paralyzed after a fight with Daredevil. So a nationalist named Tomo Yoshida, the evil uncle of Shiro Yoshida, aka Sunfire, wanted to steal Lord Darkwood's research to make his own army of soldiers that he'd bring to bear on America. So he hired his nephew along with Mystique and Rogue of the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and a mutant mind controller named Blindspot to steal Lord Darkwind's research. And they all fought on Oyama's Island in Tokyo Bay. And their battle took long enough for Lord Darkwind to escape with his hard drives and research, but it wasn't safe. Marcy Stryker's wife, William Stryker, with his connections to T-Max and the Weapon X and Weapons Plus programs, stole Lord Darkwind's scientific breakthroughs. And they used this to bond Logan's skeleton with adamantium to create Weapon X, Wolverine. Eureka was angry at her father for scarring her and for sending her brothers to their deaths. Eureka also had a boyfriend on the island named Kiro, who was serving her turn to the dark side dad that she wanted to free. So Yuriko teamed up with Matt Murdock, aka Daredevil, who had come to the island looking for Bullseye. Yuriko ended up killing Lord Darkwind, her own father, while her lover Kiro, he too, died. Though stricken with grief and anger, Yuriko slowly accepted her father's beliefs, partly due to how devoted her lover Kiro had been in him. She also thrusts into inheriting her father's estate, and so she was bound by honor to continue, vowing also to reclaim his prized adamantium research. So she took on a costume as a samurai warrior and vowed to find Bullseye, who would betray Kenji. In fact, she vowed to do whatever she had to to restore her father's honor and continue his work and his science. Yuriko had a tracking device that could locate adamantium, and she wanted to use this to find Bullseye, but instead it brought her directly to Wolverine. Now calling herself Lady Deathstrike, she was armed with her feelings in a deadly katana, and along with her soldiers, fought with Wolverine and a hero from the Canadian team Alpha Flight named Vindicator. Yuriko thought Wolverine had stolen her dad's scientific theories since his bones were bonded to adamantium, and in the battle, Vindicator ended up defeating Yuriko. But Yuriko wanted to win, and to do so, she needed to somehow get on Wolverine's level. So Yuriko went to Spiral in Spiral's body shop, whom she had paid to turn her into a cyborg using technology from Mojo mojo reverse. Her bones were bonded with adamantium and she got sharp claws on her fingers, long bladed talons. At the body shop was her, along with a trio of other cyborgs named Macon, Reese, and Cole, former Hellfire Club guards, that Wolverine had shredded during the Dark Phoenix saga. They went on to again attack Wolverine, although again, they lost. Lady Deathstrike, along with Cole, Macon, and Reese, then went to former Hellfire Club member slash assassin Donald Pierce to join his team called the Reavers, flushing out a team that also included Pretty Boy, Bonebreaker, and Skullbuster. The Reavers were a paramilitary group of cyborg killers. Lady Deathstrike was there out of her own convenience, but her mission remained her own. Lady D and the Reavers were able to capture Wolverine, and they tortured and crucified him, hanging him up on a giant cross to die. 
Jubilee managed to free Wolverine and the two X-Men fought with Deathstrike and the Reavers in order to escape with their very lives. Donald Pierce was furious about Wolverine's escape and he was about to choke out Lady Deathstrike but kissed her instead. He was in the middle of calling her irresistible when she flipped into the ground and said, As a woman and machine and as a warrior, I always give better than I get. Pretty Boy was in Wolverine's abandoned room where they had discovered the honor sword of Sunfire, Silver Samurai, and Scarlet Samurai's Clan Yoshida on display, a sword forged by the legendary Masamune. She took the sword to the hidden spot where Jubilee had nursed Wolverine back to health and hid the sword there as she said, until Wolverine returns to claim it or upon my death or I do upon his. She found him and Jubilee and lined Wolverine up in the crosshairs of the scope on her sniper rifle, but she didn't fire. She was both warrior and nobility, so she understood respect and honor and wanted their final battle to be as equals on a field of honor, so she walked away. Instead, she went cliff diving and swimming at an Australian outback freshwater lake. Donald Pierce sent Lady Deathstrike and the Reavers to Muir Isle, where they fought with Banshee and a powerless Polaris until Mystique showed up with Freedom Force for an assist. That's when Lady D jumped on the Freedom Force jet, smashing the canopy and forcing it to crash. She then walked up to the Reavers and gunned them down, and as Pierce grabbed her, she morphed to her true form. It wasn't Lady Deathstrike, it was Mystique. After recruiting Scylla Markham to the Reavers to be the replacement Skullbuster, Lady Deathstrike and the team attacked Emma Frost's Frost Technotics in Blaylock, California, destroying the facility while demanding an audience with the White Queen herself. In another story, Lady D murdered a couple of police officers in Osaka, Japan, still on the trail of Wolverine. She was able to use her cyborg abilities to hack their computer and track Wolverine via Tiger Tiger in Hightown, Madripoor, along with a cargo manifest for a supposedly dead patch, aka Logan. Pierce ordered Gateway to open a portal and send her directly to Madripoor. By threatening to kill a waitress, she forced Tiger Tiger to give her a postcard from Wolverine, revealing he was now in Vancouver, Canada. So Gateway then sent her right into the boat where Logan was relaxing with Alpha Flight's Puck. But it ended up creating a time vortex and she was sent back in time with Wolverine and Puck to 1937 Spain just as World War II was breaking out. Deathstrike joined a Luftwaffe squadron of the German Air Force and fought with Wolverine. But in the ensuing battle, her own arm was destroyed by a tank. Although when they got back to the present day via the time vortex, it was replaced. Soon after this, most of the Reavers were completely destroyed in a fight with massive Sentinels, although Deathstrike herself managed to stay alive. So she ended up in Times Square, New York City, with a new all-black costume, and now working for Donald Parvenu. And in another battle, this time with Sabretooth, Wolverine, Jubilee, and the Hunter in the Darkness. Then acting on Intel, she went to Ottawa, Canada to confront Wolverine again, who was now at Vindicator of Alpha Flight's house, and once again they fought, but when Wolverine showed her that he no longer had adamantium in him, that his claws were now bone, she stood down. Her revenge quest was for her father's stolen work, for his precious metal. After all, and he apparently now was distanced from that fight. Despite that, one rainy night in the East Village of New York, Eureka attacked Wolverine as he met Damon Hellstrom in an alley. He reminded her that his adamantium was gone as she revealed that Donald Pierce had again updated her onboard computer systems and that she now had a cybernetic healing factor. She demanded the box he had, but he clawed her face apart. They realized they could work together though, and so Deathstrike called for a truce. But then the spirit of Ogan attacked and possessed Deathstrike, turning her into a deformed monster, so she smashed a window and disappeared into the rainy night. The possessed Eureka reappeared in 1998's Heroes Reborn Captain America issue 1, now in Japan, running Akutagawa and Strike Force Yukio, whom she sent after Captain America, who happened to be hanging out in Tokyo's Ginza Strip. In Domino's miniseries, Domino broke into a facility run by Henry Gyrick to rescue her husband Milo, and she ran into Lady Deathstrike there. Domino called her a ghost in the shell wannabe while Deathstrike said, You fight well for Gaijin. Domino took her out with a thermite explosion, but she didn't die. She went full on Terminator, minus the, you know, thumbs up. She brought Domino back to Donald Pierce, which is when she also got her own epidermis reinstalled. In X-Men Annual 2000, we meet Eureka again, introduced as the head of the world-renowned Oyama Design Group. She was now at the Crown Imperial Hotel in Toronto, Canada. Strife had reactivated some Sentinels called Prime Sentinels and sent them after Lady Deathstrike, which forced her to work with the X-Men for once in order to take down Strife and his Sentinel army. In another story, Lady Deathstrike teamed up with Omega Red to go after Wolverine, and they managed to kidnap Wolverine's friend and foster daughter Yukio and Amiko and brought them to Sabretooth, although Sabretooth ended up double-crossing them both. Deathstrike then broke William Stryker out of prison. 
She then fell under the mind control of a sentient computer named Paul, and she ended up fighting with both William Stryker and the X-Men, which put her in battle with Wolverine once more. Deathstrike was seemingly killed when the rubble collapsed down upon her, but when Bishop went to look for her body, all he could find was her cybernetic arm amidst the rubble. Yes, she escaped once more. Then, Blindspot went back to the Oyama's island to erase the tracks from their failed mission years before and wipe everyone's memory. And Blindspot tried to erase Deathstrike's memories as well, but Lady D had backup files for her memories and had them reinstalled. Lady Deathstrike captured Blindspot, and so Blindspot released a photograph of their strike team so they'd come rescue her. And when they got there, they fought with Lady D, and Deathstrike ended up cutting off Sunfire's legs. And Deathstrike figured out that they did not kill her dad, but she attacked them again anyway, because while they didn't kill him, they did attack her and her family. Rogue absorbed Sunfire's powers and went off to fight Deathstrike, but the rest of the X-Men got there just in time to stop it. During the Superhuman Civil War, Lady Deathstrike joined the government-sponsored Thunderbolts team she was in the massive battle at the end of Civil War, where Spider-Man kicked her in the face during the fight. And then, taunting Captain America, she got distracted, and Namor took both her and Bullseye down. And she ended up being remanded to a prison in the negative zone at the end for her crimes. But later, during an event called Messiah Complex, she was out, she was back in her 616, and Lady Deathstrike teamed up with both the Reavers and the Purifiers. The new X-Men attacked, and Lady D was severely wounded, nearly killed. They then went after Cable and the Messiah Baby, and when that happened, Lady Deathstrike fought with Laura Kinney X-23, and X-23 killed Deathstrike. But she wasn't gone. Once again, Spiral, at her mojo body shop, was able to repair and revive Lady Deathstrike, but made her more of a simp than she was before X-23 killed her. Spiral took Lady Deathstrike to Madeline Pryor, the Red Queen, to join her Sisterhood of Mutants. Lady D and the Sisterhood brought Quan and Psylocke back to life, and with her team full once again, went after the X-Men. But the X-Men defeated Deathstrike in the Sisterhood. The Red Queen died, but Deathstrike managed to escape again, slipping to safety using one of Spiral's portals to teleport away. In Uncanny X-Force issue 5.1, Lady Deathstrike took the Reavers to attack the X-Men safe haven of Utopia. She battled with Wolverine and stabbed him right in the face, but X-Force defeated them and pushed back their attack. So after this, Lady D went to the island nation of Madripoor to visit her brother, surprise, he's alive, Lord Deathstrike in Lowtown. Logan heard she'd be in Madripoor for a party, and so he showed up to fight with her once again. And then during an amazing Spider-Man story called Ends of the Earth, Deathstrike was in Australia with Dr. Octopus, where she killed Kangaroo with one brutal slash of her talons. The Secret Avengers ran into Deathstrike in a robot city called Core after she joined with a guy named Father. Father was part of a UK branch of Weapons Plus, a scientist on Project Descendant who were trying to make more androids based on the original Human Torch, an android created by Professor Horton decades ago. So Yuriko joined with the Descendants along with Deathlock, Wasp, Black Ant, Max Fury, and others. She attacked a naked Brunhilde, Valkyrie, who was making out with Agent Venom at Lighthouse Station in orbit above Earth. In the last issue of Secret Avengers, she attacked and fought with Hawkeye. It was here where she also battled with Captain Britain briefly. And here is where we meet Ana Cortez. Ana's father was a Colombian kingpin who ruled over a cartel empire from their home in Bogota, Colombia. When he died, Ana inherited his wealth and power, and she ended up hiring an old associate of Rico's, a Yakuza assassin named Rico, to steal Yuriko's consciousness, something that could be stored in a digitized form on a USB drive. And Ana uploaded Yuriko's mind into her own head. And this is how Ana inherited Lady Deathstrike's powers. Ana also had nanates in her body, which gave her an artificial healing factor, a power that would make her forever young. And Ana then put on a Day of the Dead style makeup for her new identity. And she was now also Lady Deathstrike. Ana and Rico then used a technorganic being named Archaea in an attempt to continue upgrading herself. And Archaea can control humans and electronics, and Ana then formed her own Sisterhood of Mutants along with Amora the Enchantress and Typhoid Mary just before Yuriko took over her conscious, and she became 100% Lady Deathstrike. It was Archaea who planned to help Enchantress resurrect the mutant sorceress Selene and Madeline Pryor. Ana went to the X-Men for help stopping Archaea, and then Ana killed herself with a katana to stop Lady Deathstrike. However, Yuriko's mind was then uploaded into Rico's mind, and Archaea turned Ana Cortez into Madeline Pryor. During the death of Wolverine event when Logan lost his healing factor and Viper put out a contract on him, Yuriko attacked Sabretooth who was fighting in Hightown Madripoor against Logan. Deathstrike almost ripped out Sabretooth's spine, but Wolverine said, no, 
Don't do that to a poisoned guy who's chained up. It's not honorable. Deathstrike said she learned from Lord Ogan that someone had a contract out for people like them, meaning people with healing factors, and she came to Madripoor from Japan to see if he wanted to work together with her to see who put out the hit order. She realized, though, that Wolverine had lost his healing factor, and she was about to kill him and turn him in to save her own life, but Kitty Pride showed up and phased her arm through Deathstrike's chest. And Eureka lashed out at Kitty, and Kitty phased her hand through Eureka's, then unfazed, destroying her clawed hand in a mist of blood and tendons, and so Lady Deathstrike ran off, clutching her bloodied arm. Then Wolverine died, attacking the Weapon X lab of Dr. Cornelius, and Cornelius's subjects captured Deathstrike, Sabretooth, Doc, and X-23, and Mystique, hoping to lock their healing factor secrets for themselves. And then, part of Deathstrike dealing with Logan's death was to fight through the underworld of Tokyo to reclaim the honor blade of Clan Yoshida. And later, bland in hand, she thought to herself, Without him to hunt, who am I to become? What is her purpose? What does her life mean now that he's gone? And she decided that Wolverine's work passed to her, the blade, her own mark in making. Then a team called Wolverines decided to go after Mr. Sinister, who'd stolen Wolverine's entombed body and Dawkins' arm that he had torn right off of his body. And later, Lady Deathstrike and the Reavers decided to go after Old Man Logan to kill him. Logan killed the Reavers, but Deathstrike managed to escape, so Logan turned the tables and started hunting her. Lady D was then captured and experimented on. Her genetic nanotech was combined with materials from Old Man Logan, Amadeus Cho, as Totally Awesome Hulk, aka Braun, Domino, Warpath, and Sabretooth, and used in the creation of Weapon H, the latest bioweapon to come out of Weapon X Project's Batch H division. She was then put in thick chains and knelt before an audience alongside Sabretooth and Logan and gunned down, shot in the head with a Muramasa bullet by the orphans of X. X-23 and Honey Badger, though, brought them back from the dead. Lady D and the other Weapon H test subjects took out the facilities as homicidal adamantium cyborgs chased them down. Then Deathstrike was in Japan when she got the call that Wolverine's statue was empty. He was alive again, her purpose restored. So Deathstrike, Sabretooth, and Dokken followed the trail to an abandoned desert town where they ended up fighting with zombies. And Deathstrike was then on a Weapon X team with Sabretooth, Mystique, Domino, and Omega Red called Weapon X-Force. Next, Deathstrike was at Roxxon Casino in Las Vegas for an auction at the Criminal Tech Show Expo. And Deathstrike was last seen in 2021's The Legend of Shang-Chi, where she broke into the British Museum to steal a Kamakura period katana called the Equinox Blade. She murdered a guard and then fought with the Master of Kung Fu himself right in the museum. The backup system in the museum came online and the two had to fight and chase each other in between crisscrossing laser beams, and again they fought with a flurry of fists and blades clanging and smashing together. Deathstrike stabbed Shang-Chi with a mystical blade, but then he punched her out a window and she was gone into the wind, ready to fight another Another day in another comic book sometime in the future. Oh, and Lady Deathstrike did appear in the Out of the Past episode of the X-Men animated series, and she was played in live action by Kelly Hu for X2 X-Men United. So where will Deathstrike show up next? We'll have to wait and see. Until then, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.